When one thinks of the Pacific Northwest, you probably picture lush coastal rainforest dripping with moss. But this region is full of diversity. A good chunk of my heart belongs to the high mountain deserts of Idaho with their grizzly lichens and interesting creatures. When I started this project, I wanted to make something honoring this climate, this part of the Pacific Northwest. The hot, dry mud cracks, the lichen on rocks, the acrid air that sometimes smells like sagebrush and sometimes smells like smoke. When I picked up my clay to start the teapot, I happened to be angry, really angry. And anger is not an emotion I experience very often. So I, I turned to clay to, to help ground me, to help soothe me. But the clay was responding to my mental state. I was handling it in such a different way. I was as being a lot more rough with it than I usually am. I'm usually tender and gentle and patient with my porcelain. This time I was just kind of pummeling it into shape, not really realizing how much of my anger I was letting out in that process. But the result was rather beautiful. It looked like the mud cracks that I walk over in the summertime. It fit the landscape even better than I could have planned for. If the misty, rainy winters on the coast are the embodiment of melancholy, the dry mud cracks in the late summer here are the embodiment of anger. It feels hot, tense, crunchy, about to snap. In my attempt to seek more diversity in the landscapes and natural forms I portray through my ceramics, I think I also allowed myself to feel more diversity in my heart. Anger is a difficult emotion and it's unhealthy to feel it too often, but repressing it or hiding under it is just as bad. And it felt good to release some of it while I was creating these. At first, when I saw the cracks that I had formed, I felt bad or I felt sad. I felt like I had wasted clay or ruined my project. Then I allowed myself to look at them a little differently. And what I saw was something I loved, something rugged and tough and different and beautiful. Something that I think I've been struggling to love in myself. And though some of this design will be covered up, I'll know that it's under there, this relic of emotions not usually permitted and the healing that came from releasing them and feeling them and letting them take physical form. This project was incredibly cathartic, but it didn't end when the anger stopped. I felt a bit like a mad scientist mixing colored oxides into slip, which is a liquid clay, honoring the bright yellows of the lichens that often cover the rocks in this area. To get the right shapes and forms, I called on my culinary background and piped those babies on with a frosting piping tip. Slip has a consistency similar to buttercream, so it took a little trial and error to figure this out, but surprisingly not very much. I added another kind of lichen using a small squirt bottle, as you can see here. Working with slip is one of my favorite parts of working with ceramics. I find it to be incredibly meditative and soothing. I also really enjoyed sculpting the little lizards that you see on this set, based on the lizard from the first clip of this video. Unfortunately, I forgot to film during this process because I was so engrossed in all the details, so I apologize for that. To finish the lichen, I let it dry a little bit and then just shaped it using a variety of tools to add depth and texture to it before firing. Oh, and I added little fruiting bodies too because of course I did. <laughs> After those dots had dried slightly, I just used the end of a paintbrush to turn them into little cups. Then after their first firing, it was time to glaze using a variety of beautiful yellow glazes and underglazes to add color and texture. 
It's always tricky glazing the inside of a teapot and I haven't figured out a way to do it without making at least a little bit of a mess. To highlight all of that amazing crackly, crunchy texture that I put on the base of the teapot, I added a dark brown underglaze and then wiped it back so that it would really hide in the cracks and bring the piece to life. I also decided I wanted to add more depth through color to really make these feel like lichen covered rocks. So I dabbed on a little bit of yellowish green underglaze anywhere that felt right. <laughs> Then I added yet another kind of lichen with yellow underglaze added in round dots and circles, all from observation of just taking walks outside. I also spent quite a bit of time really getting the details right on my lizards. I wanted them to be as expressive and beautiful and lively as their real life counterparts. I went back and looked at the footage that I'd filmed of that beautiful lizard to add details that matched. There's a lot of subtle patterning and coloring that I wanted to make sure I captured on these pieces. I know that glazing for some potters is just dipping your piece into a bucket, but for me, I often spend more time on the glazing process than it took me to even sculpt the pieces in the first place. You're probably getting a little bit of a sense of that, just seeing the level of detail that I'm putting into these. I tried something totally experimental with the tops of the pieces that I wanted to be separate from the lichen area. I have this yellow glaze that is reactive to iron. So I painted these little sun rays of like an iron rich glaze around the edges and then covered it in that yellow glaze. I'm really excited to see how they come out of the firing. Here are the pieces all ready to go. Let's take one last really good look at them before I close the kiln and leave the rest of the kiln gods and hope that they're kind to me. Here we go. Oh my gosh, they turned out so yellow. Oh, I love the way the colors pop. Oh my gosh, I almost couldn't be happier with these pieces. Wow. And you have to see our little lizard friend in the sun. Oh my gosh, does he ever sparkle. I added a little bit of a glaze that has sparkles in it and I think it just worked really well to bring them both to life. I love all the contrasting textures on these pieces from the sparkling lizards to the dreamy, soft, buttery interior glaze to the outside glaze that reacted really cool to the rough rock-like textures of the lichen. Ah, oh, yes, I'm so happy with these. <laughs>